Hi, my name is Laura and this is my YouTube channel. If you've been watching for the last, I don't know, five episodes, whatever, um, you'll know that I'm a bike racer and I do a lot of stuff bike racing related, I'm getting better at editing my, my uh, videos. I've been uploading some old, um, some old footage from old uh, bike, ra bike rides um, that I haven't uploaded yet. Um, still working out every day. In fact, I have a workout tonight that's going to be, uh, I'm going to do sort of a, a weight training workout. Um, and as far as my bike training goes, uh, this week I'm supposed to do an FTP test, uh, functional threshold power. I haven't done one since last summer, I think. So I think I've gotten stronger. I've, I feel like I've gotten stronger. Um, but to do a proper FTP test, everything has to come together if you want your numbers to be right during your workouts. So, you know, if your coach uh, prescribes to work out at 100% of your threshold or 90% of your threshold or 85% of your threshold, you have to know what your threshold is because if you're working on an old number, whether you've gotten stronger or weaker, then your workout isn't gonna be quite tailored to what you need. So if you're at 100% of, an, of a threshold that's too low, then you're, you won't get as much out of the workout. By the same token, if you're at 100% of a threshold that's too high, you're not gonna be able to sustain the effort for the, for the workout, and you're gonna end up burning out before the workout's done. Um, neither one of those situations is good, which is why it's always good to have, have an accurate threshold. Um, the, the, the threshold tests the threshold tests are difficult. Um, you can either do the 20 minute test or the two eight minute tests with a, a rest in between. Um, both of them are estimates of what you should be able to do. It's actually really hard to do a full hour at threshold because there are so many things that come into play. So the best chance that I've ever had to get a full threshold effort out on the road for a full hour is during the the state time trial championships because that's a 40 kilometer time trial and it takes me a little over an hour to do it. Um, last year I was doing pretty well until I got towards the end and my legs started cramping up and I had to back off. Uh, the numbers were still okay. I beat my time my 2016 time beat my 2015 time by about five minutes and that's that's a lot. Um, uh, that's a lot to beat any time trial time by. Uh, the the there's an early season time trial series that is sort of a good benchmark for what's going to happen during the season. But <laughs> I always mess up at the at, during that time trial series because I can never seem to get everything right for those first few. Luckily, it's a it's a I think it's a seven race series with one spare date for uh, for bad weather. And the first few races, I always forget things like I forget my nutrition. I forget to bring enough uh, drink. I there's been times I forgot my trainer. There have been times I've forgotten you know just random things that I've forgotten heart rate monitor once. Um, and when you're trying to go threshold, uh, you can go by feel, which I tend to overdo it by feel. So if I'm, do, if I'm going by feel, I go out way too hard and then I end up having uh, to back off as the ride goes. And I really, have, um, I really have to watch my numbers to make sure I don't overcook myself on, on any given time trial effort. Mountain bike racing is a bit easier to go by feel because you know, it's, it's all feel. Um, when, you, when you start, you have to go full blast to get to the single track first when you're in the single track and you're following someone you are trying to keep up with them because you don't want to let them out of your sight there is no resting there's no drafting there's no sitting in um, you just race and if your skills are good then your skills are good um, speaking of mountain bike racing i i bought i think i showed a picture of my of my new uh, hardtail frame that i bought in one of my last videos but here it is again, in case you haven't seen it yet. Um, it'll be nice when uh, the carbon repair is done. Um, then I'll be able to pick it up. I'm, I'm building a list of all the parts that I need to order to make it fully functional so that I can ride it. I don't know when I'll have all the parts. Um, 
I'm gonna try and go inexpensive on everything on on as much as I can to get it built as soon as possible um, which means I'm gonna go cheap on some components uh, I'm gonna go for the full um, XT setup as far as the, the the derailers and shifters and all that um, I'm gonna go XT I haven't decided on which which uh, brakes I'm gonna use yet um, I might uh, I'll look at the various ones. I don't know if I'm gonna go Shimano or uh, I like the Avids. That's what I had on my old mountain bike um, But uh, still decisions to be made uh, money to spend which uh, I need to quit spending money on bikes <laughs> It's an addiction, I guess you could say addiction. Yeah, eh, but it's a fitness addiction. So It's not hurting me, I guess um, but just like I said after my last couple of bikes, uh, this should be my last bike purchase for a while. Uh, the whole, the, everyone talks about the N plus one is, is, uh, the proper amount, number of bikes you should have is N plus one and being your current number of bikes. I've never subscribed to that because that's just one of those things that I have never really been able to afford to do. Uh, right now I feel like I have too many bikes anyway. Uh, I have two mountain bikes, two road bikes, a track bike, and a third mountain bike that I'm getting ready to build up, which the one I'm talking about now. Uh, it's a 29er frame, which I've never had a 29er, but it's large, so it should keep the front wheel out uh, out from being in the way of my shoes. If I get the right stem, it may it shouldn't feel like trying to drive a semi. Um, you know, I should be able to make some decisions that, that should make it a little bit snappier. Uh, speaking of mountain bikes and wheels, on my Orbea, I recently tried to switch to uh, tubeless. And this, the valve stems that I bought, I don't know if it's the stems or if I've done something wrong or what's happening, but they, they're, they constantly lose air around the stem. And I can tell because you can hear the air coming out. You know, the rim is taped fine, it's not coming out through the bead, but the the valve stems seem to be letting air out. So I saw a trick online where you can cut an old inner tube and then poke holes in the inner tube and stick the valve stem through, then stick it through the rim in the tire, and it will uh, put a little bit more pressure on it so you can tighten it down a little bit more and then it'll be fine. Uh, that's what I'm trying right now on one of my tires. Hopefully it works. Mm, hopefully. I don't know if it will, but hopefully. And I hope they'll work because they're purple. And I like purple, so it should be fun. My plan is to video some of my workout tonight. Uh, I, I have a, a, a dumbbell set here at home. I have a weight bench. I have Swiss ball. I have um, foam rollers. I have all kinds of stuff here at home. And I'm going to video some of my workout. On another note, the team that I'm on, uh, the Primal Audi Denver women's team, if you've seen my, uh, if you've seen me on Strava, you see that there's like, I used to have PAWD, but I switched it to PADW because it's technically Audi Denver, and I just wanted paw, because I like, I like paw, like little kitty paws, um, but I switched it around, so PADW, Primal Audi Denver women. <coughs> Our team director, uh, released what our new kits are going to look like so we have those ordered and here's what they look like I I like them they're gonna be kind of cool primal makes a really good kit and they're um, it's really weird the team that I was on before the since we didn't have enough women on the team we had to buy men's jerseys and the men's medium was always really tight uh, pretty much I mean not not like not tight like I needed a large but like it didn't fit the shape properly, if that makes sense. Um, so when I tried on the Primal Women's jersey, it actually fits the shape, it fits my shape properly, so it's gonna feel a lot more comfortable. Although, you know, my arms are a little bit big, so it's gonna be a little bit tight on my, on my biceps, but it'll be fine. Um, I'll just try and keep it pulled down a little bit so it doesn't, so it doesn't look like a sausage his sausages are bad coming out of kits um, and on to the workout
this weight set goes up to 90 pounds on each hand. I'm only doing 40 on each hand right now. It's been a while since I've been able to do anywhere close to the full 90. So as you could probably tell, the, my phone battery died during the workout, so I didn't capture the whole thing. Uh, sped through it. Um, arms got pretty tired. It was an upper body workout. Uh, something I said after the phone stopped working was, there's a shoulder workout, or most of the stuff in the shoulders is really helpful if you experience numb hands, because uh, weak muscles, um, weak shoulder muscles, tend to cause uh, overstress in certain areas. So it'll cause knots, it'll cause pinching. And uh, you know, I, I've, I've had uh, nerve pinching in my shoulder when I let myself get weak. So I, as long as I keep myself strong, then I don't get numbness in my, in my fingers and hands. And before when I was talking about our two main team sponsors, Primal Wear and Audi Denver, um, we actually have uh, several other team sponsors that I'll mention now. Um, so Primal Wear, Audi Denver, First Bank, Inspired Training Center, who I get my uh, coaching through with um, Coach Sue, Rudy Project North America, C3 Bike Shop. Um, I go to the one in Golden because I live closest to Golden. Uh, Feedback Sports, Honey Stinger, Garmin, and Scratch Labs. Support them because they support us. They support the cycling community. Thank you. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Bye.